The Tao of Self-Confidence, Episode 467 Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. Visit our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yap Chan, and today I have a phenomenal lady on the show today. She is the founder and host of the Ginny Show podcast, and I'm just really excited to have her on and share her story with us today on self-confidence. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Ginny Saraswati. Ginny, how are you today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more about yourself to our listeners. Hello, Sheena. Thank you so much for having me on your show. I'm, I'm really excited. I love how when podcasters connect, they get to do things like this. Um, I'm a little bit worried, though, for the listeners, when two podcasters connect, does that mean neither of us will stop talking? Will this keep going on and on and on and on forever? <laughs> I love connecting with other podcasters. I think it's great, you know, sharing the same common interests and learning new tips and tricks, you know, I'm always open to learning more new things. But yeah, I'm really great, you know, to have you here today to share your story. Awesome. It's just interesting because I I make all these jokes sometimes because here in Australia, when there are Australian radio awards or podcast awards, they're not allowed to give speeches when they win the award because no one would ever go home. So um, <laughs> thanks for having me on your show, Sheen. I, I guess the way to explain me would be I'm a talkative person and I manage to uh, masquerade my constant chatter into a podcast every week. My podcast is a daily, uh, sorry, a weekly dose of, of wisdom and laughter, I guess the way to put it. So I sum it up with curry, comedy and connectivity, which kind of is a few cultural references and um, a few comedic references. And also I kind of figure out a theme that we all are connected through regardless of our diversity or culture. So um, that's that's my podcast in a nutshell, The Ginny Show. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And Ginny, what's your cultural background? So I am Sri Lankan born. So it's funny because uh, when I travel to America quite often, a lot of Americans don't know where Sri Lanka is. So I have to explain exactly where it's located on the map. So uh, Sri Lanka is a little uh, island off the coast of India. And my parents were born and raised there, as were my grandparents. Sometimes I like to slip in that I'm 116 Portuguese because I believe down the track I do have some Portuguese influence down there, but uh, my parents grew up there for most of their lives. I migrated to Australia when I was two, so a lot of my, I guess, beliefs and values were coloured by the culture here. But yeah, so my cultural background is Sri Lankan, and my uh, parents, my mum's Catholic and my dad's Buddhist, so I kind of have a multi-faith, multicultural upbringing, if that makes sense. Awesome, totally makes sense, and thanks for sharing that. And, you know, what would be your favourite self-confidence quote? Oh, there's a few things. I've got to say it's got to be uh, one from one of my personal heroes, which is Ellen. I think it's pretty self-explanatory as to why she's one of my heroes. I think she's uh, one of those people who live her truth day to day and she comes across self-confident because I think she lives her truth. So my favorite quote from her is find out who you are and, and be that person. Find that truth, be that truth and everything else will come. And I think she's a living example of that. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And I love that quote that you mentioned, right? I think a lot of people fear, you know, living their true authentic self, not realizing that's like the secret recipe, right? When you just go out there and be your authentic self, be your true self, you know, that's when the magic happens. Like Ellen, you know, she's an amazing woman, you know, and I'm sure, you know, she's gone through some trials and tribulations, but she always spoke her truth no matter what happens. And because of that, she's widely successful because she stays true to herself. So I totally agree with that. And thanks for sharing that quote quote. And, you know, in your own words, how do you define self-confidence? I think self-confidence and I think I think self-confidence is born from an un- unwavering sense of self-awareness. I think if you actually get to know yourself, get to know what you're good at, get to know what you're not good at, get to know what makes you angry, get to know what makes you happy. If you really zone in on those things about yourself and you really, really get to know yourself, I think in a way that there's actually that's the absolute recipe for success because no matter what criticism is thrown at you you know yourself well enough to accept that criticism or not you're not going to let that deter your journey or where you want to go in life or how you want to live your truth so I think unwavering self-awareness I think empathy also is a, a counter to that as well because I think you need to be able to deploy that empathy to understand other people and other humans and where they're coming from and um, where they're 
awareness kind of derives from. But I think those two things, unwavering self-awareness and empathy, mixed with a bit of gratitude for, you know, being alive and being here, I think those three key things is the definition of self-confidence to me. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that great definition. And Ginny, what was your life like before your discovery of self-confidence? For me, I think before I kind of figured out that I didn't have to always live life the way that I was because I used to be very angry. I'm not saying that I don't experience anger now. I do still get angry at things. Actually, when I think about it, 98% of the things out there piss me off, but I don't focus on them anymore. I kind of focus on the, the things that are good. You know, when I read something in the news or something that's been tweeted, I get mad, but I try not to focus on those things. But I think before I made or before I may, uh, was introduced to self-confidence, anger was a big part of it. I um was raised by a single parent and my mother was divorced twice and she remarried again. And culturally in Sri Lanka, you know, a divorced woman isn't held in high regard. They're kind of outcast in society. And even though we moved to Australia, she experienced a lot of that from the Sri Lankan community here. And I kind of saw people take advantage of her her kindness and her generosity because, you know, people thought, okay, well, she's an outcast. It's, It's fine you know, she can deal with it. It's okay to treat an outcast that way. And I think for me, seeing that I became quite fearful to express who I truly was and live my truth rather than looking at it as an example of, wow, even though mum's going through this, I can actually look at it and be like, well, she's still being true to herself. So um, for me, when I wasn't self-confident, all that sort of stuff manifested in my life through anger and, and body weight, really, because if you hold things in and you suppress who you are and you suppress the truth, it's got to manifest or come out in a way, doesn't it, physically. So um, that's what it was. And um, I think the more I held on to fear of who I was, the more I didn't live or express my truth, the more sadness, pain and anger I experienced. So that's what it looked like before I found self-confidence. Thanks for sharing that, Ginny. And I think, you know, it's something we all go through, right? That fear, you know, fear of being criticized, fear of being judged, fear that if we do something different, you know, people might laugh at us. But, you know, sometimes we can use fear as something, you know, as as something positive, right? Instead of, you know, not living our truth. Funny that you say that, Trina, because the funny thing about fear is a lot of the fear, 98% of the time that we experience fear, we actually fear something that hasn't actually happened or doesn't exist in that moment. So it's just, it's funny how we engineered as humans that we're, we're scared of something or we fear something that hasn't happened yet but we put so much time, energy and worry into it. It's it's fascinating. Yeah, totally. I agree with you because I used to be that way. I feared every single little thing. And it's like, you know, what am I being afraid of? Because when we go out there and actually take that next step, it's like it wasn't as bad as it was, you know, when we thought about it, right? When we overanalyze and overthink about it. But, you know, what was that point in your life when you realized, you know, you were more than enough to go out there and be the amazing person that you are today, be your true self, have that confidence? What was that aha moment? I think for me, the going out and being myself and finding my truth, I think finding my truth, I think I've I've developed a sense of self-awareness over the past, I would say, five years. I think it's going to be an ongoing journey, but for the most part, I think I have a pretty good sense of who I am, and I think I'm looking forward to getting to know more of who I am as with each chapter that unfolds in my life. But I think one of my main aha moments, which really was a big, what I call a soul shift for me, was I was in a couple of relationships which I really saw unhealthy behavior patterns w- within me and within my my partners as well. Like a lot of the relationship that we shared was built on anger and frustration and resentment. And it wasn't particularly to do with anything the other person did. It was more so with the fact that I think internally we were all both dealing with things that we hadn't settled or we hadn't brought to the truth or into the light, so to speak. So... When I when I ended my last relationship, it was about 2011 or 2012. I um I went out one night and I wanted to just forget about it. And I'm not a big drinker. I I I'm actually not a drinker at all. I rarely have. I don't like the taste of wine. I think it's terrible. But um any drink that I have has to be full of sugar. So it has to be your Bacardi breezes or your vodka cruises. I'm not sure if you're allowed to say that on your show, Sheena. But so when I went out, I actually ran into two spiritual teachers who led me to practice meditation. And it was an odd place to actually meet spiritual teachers because you're at at a dance party and you know two spiritually enlightened people come and say hey this is the way but it really put me on a path to living my truth and more so I think with meditation I kind of learned to accept my life what had happened in my life what was happening in my life and it led me 
to a path of self-confidence and being okay with who I am. Thanks for sharing that. And, you know, it's amazing how, you know, sometimes there's situations that we can't explain, but makes sense in the end, right? Like you meeting spiritual teachers at a, at a club, you know, it's, it's, it's random. And sometimes we feel like we need an explanation for anything, but sometimes we just got to let it go and, you know, just go with the flow and see what happens, right? And I always believe every situation we go through, something good comes out of it, right? You know, the situations you went through, if you didn't go through them, you wouldn't be where you are today. And And, you know, instead of dwelling on it and thinking, why did this happen to me? It's more like, I'm grateful this happened to me because it helped me become more confident, be stronger, you know, live my truth, be my true self, regardless of what anyone tells me. And, you know, because of these realizations, what's your life been like now? After those realizations where I kind of, you know, came to accept who I I was, I think keeping up with meditation and some form of uh, spiritual practice is, is imperative for me. I think getting to that time or that space every day where I just single out for me, whether it be, you know, I sit down and just have 10 minutes to myself where I don't talk to anyone, where I'm just still. I just find that when I do that, it just gives me a bit of clarity as to I can actually observe my behavior then be controlled by it, if that makes sense. I think sometimes we as humans, we're on autopilot so much that we're so reactive to things rather than responsive. And I think that's been a key element that I've observed in myself, that when I'm not quite feeling myself or when I'm not quite, you know, in my truth or in my sense of empowerment, I think I tend to be more reactive than responsive. So I think for me, when I do that, I find that a lot of my relationships and a lot of my life is healthier, lighter and more empowered and communication is more free flowing and, you know, a general appreciation and gratitude is more present than ever. And even though, you know, I, I don't always get it right there. I am human every day. I do. I do make mistakes sometimes. And but I can always come back to that place of self-awareness, like I mentioned before, and acknowledge how I feel, why I feel it. And I'll, I'm able to navigate through it rather than let it navigate me. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And Jenny, to the woman who's listening to your episode, she may be in her own journey of self-confidence. What'd be that one tip you would give to her? I think for anyone, a woman, man, wherever you are in your life, if you're about to embark on a new journey, if you're that teenager about to do your senior year in high school, wherever you are in your life, I think the most imperative thing is to deploy and invest in as much self-awareness as possible. Knowing yourself intimately, I think, is the ultimate gateway to, you know, that unwavering self-confidence. I think the only way to get there is to actually know you and to be be safe and strong in who you are because no one can take that away from you. If you have a a, a self-love there, if you have a self-awareness there of who you are, no one can really tell you otherwise. And yeah, being affected by others will be very minimal. So um, yeah, that's my advice. Deploy and invest in as much self-awareness as possible. Thanks for sharing that. I think that's a great tip that you mentioned. I really believe self-awareness plays a huge part in our confidence, right? Um, The more we're just you know, aware of the things we do or the feelings that we have, the more we can keep going and keep moving and build that confidence. So thanks for sharing that. And Ginny, if our listeners wanted to get to know a little bit more about you and what you do or check out your show, is there any links or social media profiles we can connect with? Yeah, so you can go to my website, theginnyshow.com, or you can hit me up on Instagram, Twitter, or Snapchat at The Ginny Show. So I'd love to hear from you. I love talking, hence being a podcaster is kind of my thing. I think you'd know about that too, Sheena. So <laughs> please do hit me up. I'd, I'd love to hear from you. And Sheena, thank you so much for having me on your show. It's been an absolute pre- pleasure, and I love connecting with people who um, vibe the way that I do. Awesome. Well, thanks again, Ginny. And to our listeners, if you want to connect with Ginny, you can also head on over to the thetowofselfconfidence.com and search for Ginny's name. Her show notes will pop up along with everything else that we talked about. And I just want to thank Ginny again for taking the time to share her story and tips with us on self-confidence. So thank you so much, Ginny. Thank you so much, Sheena. Awesome chatting to you. Same here. And thanks again. And to our listeners, be on the lookout for another new episode of Another Amazing Woman's Journey to Self-Confidence. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Thank you for tuning in to another amazing episode of The Tao of Self-Confidence. Visit our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com to check out cool resources, blog articles, show recaps, and so much more. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. 